miss me? How's it going? I'm Kilda Vid, your host for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel, and I'm back again with another edition of Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir. I'm down to the last two homicide cases for Cole Phelps and his partner, Rusty Yellow. We're going with Gameplay Walkthrough Episode 7. The last two homicide cases are the following. The studio secretary murder and the finale of quarter moon murders. So, grab a snack, grab a drink, grab whatever, and let's get it on. This is the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel, and it's Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir. The Studio Secretary Murder. I'm aware that it's an election year. Keep a hold of your hat, Counselor. Now is not the time to lose your nerve. It would appear that someone has hocked a rose gold wedding ring and matching engagement ring. Sound familiar? Deirdre Muller. Press the pawnbroker and see what you can find out. The address is 348 South Main Street. The Muller case goes before the grand jury next week and the DA does not want any egg on his face. Then get out to the railroad depot on Santa Fe Avenue. We have another poor unfortunate found this morning beside a railroad line. 40-year-old white woman. Right, Skipper. I want to make homicide. I mean, you know you made it if you got that bad. Okay, we're off and running with another edition of I'll Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir. This case is called the Studio Secretary Murder. <clears throat> if you've been following this channel, I've been releasing this series Another body display. and Deirdre Muller's ring. The Emperor may soon have to come to terms with the fact that he's wearing no clothes. What exactly well, did you get that book of riddles shoved up your ass? Classic you know? games such as Is that what your old man paid college right tuition now. for? As well as Grand Theft Auto 5. I'm telling you, dogs. it'll never stick and you'll get roasted. Hard to find an X in this place. This he is ran it. the light on Olympic and he finally collared him on Temple. I'm gonna take a fast car off the lot. Like that one. So in this game, you can take any car off the lot. You're a police officer. This is how you're running. The only thing is, is that if you take any non-police car, you end up. You've got to admit, this is looking odd. Yeah, anyone could pawn a ring. But if you take it along with all of the other indicators... Cole, Hugo Moeller was identified by the school's groundkeeper. He's our guy. Witnesses have fingered the wrong guy before. He ran, for God's sakes. And he always maintained he was set up.
might be you. <laughs> I play games that involve driving on the opposite side of the street. How can I help you, boys? Detectives Phelps and Galloway, LAPD. You have a rose gold wedding and engagement ring? David Bremner. I gotta get something for this pledge. Gave that bum money, now you guys are gonna leave me short. How much did you give him? Fifty bucks. Try another number. Twenty? Try ten. Feel lucky you're getting it. I have the rings right here. What's this mark here? Maker's mark. Usually traceable. That one came from Hartfield's Jewelry down on Broadway. Thanks for the tip. Where Edgar Kalu worked. Does this mark mean anything? Hallmark. Gives you an idea of the quality. 22 karat gold. What have you got on the guy who brought these in? Goes by the name of Percy B. Shelley. Gave an address. 15 Poland Street, Percy London, Tulare Shelley. County. Can you give us a description of the man who pawned these rings? Not sure. Medium height, medium build. Dark hair, I think. Sorry. He just had one of those forgettable faces. We'll be in touch, Mr. Bremner. We have a problem. We could have the local troopers check out the Tulare County address. The address is bogus. The perp is having fun with us. The guy who's been sending the Dahlia letters is also the guy who pawned these rings. Interesting. Punch. How to go to the crime scene, the rail yard. How do you figure that one? Percy Bysshe Shelley wrote the poem that came with the Dahlia letter. The Dahlia letters are generally the man who killed Elizabeth Short may have also killed Deirdre Muller. And how do we prove that, Phelps? No. Skipper ain't gonna like this one. We're gonna have to rely on this guy tripping up on his own profanity. Such a fine ride. There's much fine ride. Finer rides, folks.
Ooh. Hey! Shut up. Any other hot cars? I'll take them. My button is just up later. Keep this development with the rings under our hat until we speak with the captain. We're all on the same team, Rusty. Chain of command, Phelps. The skipper will decide who needs to know. Oh, okay. you got it? Rich. I get it, Rusty. I just don't like it. If you need to have a police car, you can take police calls. You can take police calls. Yeah. I look after all the rail depots. What have you got? The Negro, Nelson Gaines, called it in. I came down here to make Negro. sure him and the other guy, Jameson, <laughs> stuck around. Jameson found the body? Something like that. Guy makes me sick. We'll talk to the coroner. Keep an eye on both of them. Nelson Gaines is the black guy. Hey, can you give me a hand? I got a hard case I need to break. So let's use my intuition. Look at the victim's personal. Good morning, ladies. What we got here? This is a chit for personal items, not booze. It's an angle worth investigating. It's got a run a trace for the address. I'm gonna need a police game well for that. What we got here? Zoom in, please. Maybe someone at Mensch's will remember her. What's in the purse? We can go over to the lot and see what they know about her. That's going to be difficult, Cole. Keystone Studio lot closed back in 41. Oh. It's a letter. Dear Evelyn, I hope this letter finds you in a better way than when we, when we last parted. Bitter words were exchanged. You had taken too much liquor and we both know what that makes you become. But I am not writing to harass and accuse. I am writing to apologize. I was heartbroken seeing what you what had become of my little girl. Was trying to get her to come home. What she is doing to herself. 
You are disobeying your body and your soul with liquor, Evelyn, and it is harder for me to watch than you can imagine. But only God Almighty above us has the right to judge and so I beg your forgiveness. I have been in contact with a sanitarium here in Connecticut on your behalf. They say your condition is an illness, Evelyn, and that it can be treated. You only need to check yourself in. It will not, so it's half of a torn letter. Smell? Very good. There is the usual evacuation smell. But Ugh. it appears she's been living rough for quite some time. Very strong smell of alcohol. Well, the autopsy will tell, but I would assume that she was inebriated. Drunk off her ass. Vagrancy. Another missing ring. Fired from her fingers. Certainly seems I've been swabbing a lot of bare fingers recently. Can you be more exact about the time of death? No later than 2 a.m. The state the body was in, a one or two hour window is the best I can do. I'll use the game when I talk. What have we got here? White female, approximately 40 years of age, lipstick smudges on the face, but no writing, at least nothing legible. A blunt force trauma to the temple nose and eye regions. Ligature marks point to the probable cause of death being strangulation. Any idea of the time of death? From her temperature, after midnight would be my guess. Good morning, ladies. Detective Phelps and Galloway, homicide. Can you tell me exactly what happened? We were shunting cars over to the main line when I saw this man here lying on top of this woman. The woman wasn't moving and seemed to be in a bad way. What time was this? About 7.30 this morning, sir. Thanks for your help. Have you given Patrolman Hart your details? I have, sir. Thank you. You can go now. Detective Phelps, LAPD Homicide. John Ferdinand Jameson. We need you to answer some questions, John. If you don't mind, I prefer Ferdinand. Don't push your luck, knucklehead. What were you doing to the body, Ferdinand? Are you sure you won't be upset? Try me, Ferdinand. I was kissing her. <laughs> it's not against the law. Shut up. There's no Take law your against it. Like a man. Turn out Necro your pockets, Gilead. Ferdinand. Classic Carmine. Same. Is this yours, Ferdinand? No. <laughs> I found it near her purse. I thought she could use some lipstick. Rusty, stop! <laughs> Don't hit him. John Ferdinand Jameson. Eyes blue, age 24, hair black. Sex male, Pacific Railway. Electric rail yard employee, potential suspicious witness. Interference with evidence. You uh, went through her purse? It wasn't like she needed it. I took a look. Okay. I would say. True. Truth. Did you take any money? It wasn't any to take. I found her lipstick and her matchbook over on the mat. Not much else. Discovery of victim's body. You found the body? Yes, I did. I work here. I was coming off shift and headed home. 
Hmm, you know something. So doubt. Why didn't you report the body, Jameson? Do you know how this is going to look to a jury? A jury? What gives? I, I could tell that she was dead. I came through here about midnight last night. She wasn't here then. Let me belt him again. You're under arrest, Jameson. We'll see how this plays out. Until then, you can think a little on how you'd like to be treated if you were found dead. I'm telling you, it's not illegal. Me and some friends of mine... Ah, <laughs> Clyde, you what get this burger. sack of shit into a cell. I'll deal with him later. Sure, Rusty. Hmm. What a creep. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, Detective? I need an address on Levine's Liquor, closest store to the Santa Fe Avenue rail yard, if possible. Just a moment, Detective. Closest store would be the one at 939 South Hope Street. Thanks for your help. I think we're going to take... Uh... Pinker's car because it's much faster. Please call you. We're we'll stop at Lupin's Liquors. Checking a map. Right there. Well, this vehicle goes fast. You can take Read that those goddamn Chinese want to sell the relief food that we're sending them? Yeah. Yeah, I read about that. These people are starving. They can't do that. Want to sell the food to fund the civil war against the communists. Really? Uh, I guess that's okay. Armies can't fight without food. You spend all your money on weapons, but you still have to have the will to fight. Fortunately, the Reds will win in China. Watch your mouth. You know what you're saying? The people of this country overthrew a king. You think the Chinese will balk at an emperor if they are starving? Yeah. Who shows intelligence? Please be a police call.
after I do the, the uh, main story of L.A. Noir, I guess I'll leave the streets of L.A. Park, which is all nothing but random street corners. Just to kind of extend the life of a game that's not going to have a sequel anytime soon, at least in the 21st century. Of course, it's the century that most of us, if not all of us, will die in. There ain't going to be no 22nd century. I guarantee you that. At least I won't be around in the life of the world. Levine's Liquor Store, 12.36 p.m. What can I do for you? LAPD, Phelps and Galloway. We're making inquiries into the murder of Evelyn Summers. Evelyn? She's dead? You knew Evelyn Summers, Mr.? Robbins. Yes, I knew Evelyn. I was a good friend of her ex-husband. She kept some of her stuff here. Can you show us, please? Sure. Come this way. Surprising enough that I've seen YouTubers go through this game without doing all they're supposed to do without doing all the clues and everything. And using the got some benefits fine of stock here, Mr. Right Robbins. Through. Yeah, yeah, so you let us take you for the road, this case might get solved a lot quicker. <laughs> yeah, Rusty He's is a He's joking, loser. Mr. Robbins. Yeah, but he is an alcoholic. That's no joke. Rusty, you're a damn alcoholic. Okay, we'll just look here so no one's here. Play it by eye. What do you got here? Bowling pen. Rawlings Bowling. Rawlings Bowling Alley. Maybe Evelyn did something other than drink in her spare time. Rawlings. I know that place. Corner of 9th and Grand. A lot of cops bowl there on Tuesday nights. His self included. And he goes bowling loaded, don't you, Rusty? You go bowling loaded, don't you? What we got here? I'm guessing Evelyn hadn't held down a job for quite some time before she was killed. It's a desk black. What do you got here? When exactly did Evelyn work in the pictures? A few years ago. She worked in legal copyrights for music. I thought Fels was using his inside voice. But no. Or at least, you know, he wasn't talking to himself. She wasn't always such a loner. Evelyn was reading Aristotle. Aristotle metaphysics. Evelyn wasn't stupid. The only stupid thing about her was her need to drink. That's what I was about to say. And she was borrowing books Grovener from Grosvenor McCaffrey. McCaffrey. Probably her mother, and that's her when she was very young, when she was a teenager. Okay, I think that's everything. Go have a talk with the man. Robbins. 
eyes blue, hair black, age 42, sex male, liquor store owner and friend of victim Evelyn Summers. Contact with victim. We're trying to account for Evelyn's movements yesterday. She came by in the morning. A social visit to pick up some of her things? She had a couple of bucks and bought a quart of rye. Of course he's telling the truth. So, truth. Any idea where the money came from? She didn't mention it. But she did say the booze was a present for a boy. She said they had been fighting and she had to make it up to him. Relationship with victim. Were you and Evelyn close, Mr. Robin? Not many people will be sad she's gone. I'll be one of the few. True. I got the impression that Evelyn had been sleeping rough of late. It became difficult for me to have her staying here. Her mother was trying to get her back on the straight and narrow. She's old now. And to be honest, you have to have a good reason to want to get back on. Knowledge of McCaffrey. Do you know a friend of Evelyn's by the name of McCaffrey? Not personally. But you do know him. Stop playing, mister. Doubt. We're struggling for leads, Robbins. Did she know McCaffrey? She idolized him. From what I gather, the feeling was far from mutual. He seems to peddle a revolutionary stance, fixing the ills of society. In other words, a communist. You could see how it would appeal to down and outs like Evelyn. Thanks for your help, Mr. Robbins. No problem. Hey, I'd like to make arrangements for the funeral. You think I could get in touch with Evelyn's mother? Put in a call to the watch commander at Central Station, Mr. Robbins. He'll be trying to reach the next of kin. Thanks. Get the guy, huh? Evelyn never hurt anybody. Just herself. like to take this time to say that if you like what you are watching, if you like the content that I'm putting on this channel, please do me a favor and subscribe to the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel for more of this play classic content such as L.A. Noir as I'm playing right now, as well as Red Dead Auto 5 and Sleeping Dogs and many other games. Mensch is Yiddish or Jewish for uh, drink, fellas. Men, fellas, Galloway, homicide. We need to ask you some questions concerning Evelyn Summers. I'm Walter Mensch. Evelyn Summers, what is it now? You knew Evelyn? As well as I wanted to know Evelyn. She's a pain in the ass, always coming in here, cadging drinks, never had any money. She was in just a couple of nights drinks, ago. She's Did she ever vagrant. tell you where she was staying? She was a vagrant. I don't know. I think she was living rough. She had that kind of stunk about her. Who did she drink with? Uh, a bunch of these guys. Ask around. 
Well, we will do that. Let's look around. What's your name? Grosvenor McCaffrey. Mind Grosvenor if I ask McCaffrey. you some questions, Mr. McCaffrey? I'm just a starving writer, detective. What do you want to ask about? Evelyn Summers and why she was found beaten and strangled in the rail depot on Santa Fe. Okay. I see your point. How well did you know her? I can't say that I knew her. It was more like I was aware of her. Person of interest, Grosvenor McCaffrey, eyes blue, hair black, age 38, sex male, known associate of murder victim Evelyn Summers, criminal history. Do you have a criminal record, Mr. McCaffrey? Nothing serious. I've had a few skirmishes. He's, yo, he's fucking lying. But you don't have proof of them lying, so doubt. Do you want to save me some time, or do you want me to look up your file? Industrial disputes, strikes, workers' rights, that kind of thing. A regular fifth columnist. Pico. Nice to meet you, comrade. Relationship with victim. You say you barely knew Evelyn? Yes, that is correct. You're lying, look at him. He's fucking lying. You're lying, McCaffrey. You looked down your nose at Evelyn, but you knew her, and you have some idea of what happened. I hope you're holding aces. I'm telling you again. I barely knew the woman. Yeah, well, according to this, barely knew her enough to have a book in her possession. Inscribed Grosvenor McCaffrey found amongst victims' personal effects. Why would you lend her your book on metaphysics if you only knew her in passing? It was more than that. A renaissance man like yourself lending his books to his acolytes. She hounded me about that goddamn book, and then she lifts it from my apartment and lies to my face that oh, she didn't she take it. it, as if she could even comprehend any of it. I saw her go into a hotel with Tiernan last night. They had booze in a paper bag. He's your man. Thank you for the information, Mr. McCaffrey. No time for you to have a drink, Rusty, so let's get out of here. Car 11K, Car 11 King, come in. Car 11K, Car 11 King, KGPL. Central. 
Police Station, 125 p.m. I want to make a homicide. You know you made it. The captain is downstairs with Ray Pinker and Carruthers. I want to make homicide. You know you made it. Can you imagine working at a police station? That price is outrageous. You can't expect me to find me right now, can you? My wife is so dumb, she stares at orange juice for hours. Well, it does say concentrate in the cart. Hey, boys. What's this about, Captain? Ray and Mal have some concerns over the Henry and Muller cases, which I don't want aired outside of this room. The evidence is solid, Captain. I agree, Rusty. It's just that corpses keep piling up. Copycats. I've been banging the same drum. But the notes and the lipstick messages. Evelyn Summers, cartel classic Carmine. Each woman, same brand, same color. Teresa Terrelson didn't have a lipstick message. Technically, you're right, Rusty. She didn't have any lipstick. But she did have a message. We found it beneath her dress, scraped with a sharp stick. What did it say? You sure you want to know, Ray? As far as we can be sure, it said, Cunt BD. Ew. That's one way of looking at it. Looking at what? Cunt is all about access, Phelps. You're married, so yours is mortgaged. Some of us like to pay by installments. This guy doesn't like to pay at all. Why are you so angry, Mal? Because I just had to fire one of my assistants. He was a friend of Jameson's. God knows what he I'm might be up to. Captain, we have good leads in the Summers case. But it's up to you to decide how we proceed. Keep okay. this under your hat for now. And to follow up on Evelyn Summers, I want daily reports. We got our orders. Back to the Summers case. Get an address from McCaffrey. He'll have blown the bar. I'll meet you outside. Is somebody gonna tell us what the hell is going on? The guy gave his wife a call. Yeah, I'm thinking moving up to a 45. Operator, give me R and I. Records and information. Department. Phelps, badge 1247. Detective. I need an address for a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Apartment 6, 126 Yale Street, between like Ord and Alpine. Who's behind? Katie Thank you. P. and R&I. The dispatch worker. Probably doesn't have a name, but the voice is recognizable. Almost like Mary McDonald Lewis. Lady J from G.I. Joe, who's the voice of OnStar. Who, when your car gets in a wreck or an accident of some kind. Let's go meet Rusty. I say we bust in there and find the goddamn evidence. That's a guy from the paper. Found that big case. Uh, my name is Cole Phelps. I need a drink. I got the jitters again. Where the hell? Oh, look at Rusty, you're in a car. Let's go. Let me pose a question. Depends. What you got to do with it? Morals. Would it bother you to put the wrong person away? Depends. On what? On whether anyone except the poor son of a bitch in the slam ever found out. Social politics of crime and punishment, just and unjust. Police corruption, police cover up, scandal, you name it. All in the 1940s, scope of lost in the scale of 1940s Los Angeles. Cole, come on! Uh, put on the siren, and the motors will move out the way. Wait, dipshit. Look at Charlie. They're not turning for me. That's 
Yes, I you better. What you doing out in the road anyway? Get out the road, get the on your usual lane? I'm Detective Phelps. Homicide. You must be new. <laughs> What's your shoe size? We're conducting an investigation, ma'am. Do you know the name Evelyn Summers? Sounds like I should. Or maybe it could be Jimmy's friend. Jimmy? James Tierney. He's a pin set. One day he introduced me to a lady after work. Stuck in my mind. Because she was much older, too old for him. Where can we find Jimmy Florence? He'll be hopping around the lanes toward the back. Thanks, ma'am. Let's go get him. You call these grits? Food wasn't great, but you and I. Down the left side of the alley. So oh, right over here. Food beers all around, doll. Look at the report. Tiernan! LAPD! Stop, you dipshit! Make me have to pop a cap in your ass. That will fill the case. You yeah. better get one too. There! Ooh, wee, look at this. Let's hit it. What are you waiting for? Get after him! Get we might go faster if we weren't carrying the extra weight. Oh, fuck you, thanks. These are flashy cars to be parked outside a bowling alley. The lanes so attract a fast living individual with money to burn, Cole. Or a middle aged individual with the need to feel virile. Midlife crisis. And there's nothing wrong with that. Another runner. Well, at least we've got a suspect. Why do they always run? I'm sure we've got the wrong person in more than one of these homicides, but they always seem to land. Ah, you know, your theories are not airtight oh, by any fucker. means. Don't go to escape on me. Get me back in close. If this isn't the killer, we can at least get him for reckless endangerment. That's unless he runs into a wall and saves us all the trouble. In the paperwork. <laughs> Pull up Hit it. Clean this asshole off the road. Yeah. He's going through the square. I hope the people see him in time to get out of the way. Otherwise they're fucked. <laughs> what if they run because someone's setting them up? Because they feel like the deck is stacked against them. I don't make up ridiculous stories for them. Yeah, the the Leave that to the perp's the imagination. Whoa, oh, looks like we're going into the tunnels. Something. God damn it, he'll kill himself. It's all right, as long as he doesn't kill us, I'm okay with it. Yeah. Oh, oh God, this kid's crazy. He's gonna kill us. I'll try to shoot out his tires. Wish me luck. Come on, Phelps, you're losing that little weasel. Don't catch that train, Phelps. Joy ride is over, kid. Yeah, end of the line, shit bird. Phelps, 
You gotta get me closer! The end of that, fucker. It's about fucking time. I agree. Get that bastard. You better not run, too, fucker. Show Ow. me your hands! Taking this car. What a good thing, though. Steady, come on! Shut the hell up. You gotta live dangerously. Please help me. Yeah, yeah. 
coal! Thanks for the tip. McCaffrey is in apartment six. By the way, if you don't like my profanity, that's there. Find something else. Apartment six. So this is where the combi pinko shitbird lives. Open up. It looks like anybody's home. Now let's go through his shit. We had a war. It's the 40s. We can do that. <laughs> At least they can do that. All right. Not sure this means much. Circumstantial. So put that shit down. This does. No, not that. Not the fucking book. I want this. It's the other half of the letter. Well, I'm not going to read the rest of it. But it's the letter from Evelyn's mother. What else do you hide? Not the fucking letter, man. Mmm. Rusty? <laughs> Thirsty? <laughs> Can't help yourself? Oh, what do you got here? You got a Bloody shirt. Oh, look at this. He said he was at home. He said he didn't know her. And we have the book. Let's see Carruthers argue his way out of this one. Is that you, Grosvenor? Who are you guys? What are you doing in here? We're from the We're LAPD. The LAPD. Do you know where we might find McCaffrey? I'm his neighbor. Is he in trouble? Look, lady, we need to find him, and in a hurry. Are you going to give me trouble? He has a pigeon coop up on the roof. He spends his mornings up there when he's been drinking. How do we get up there? Down the hall and up the stairs. Drunk and in command of a carrier pigeon. Hmm. 
Yeah, that's probably where it sends its copy, yeah. copy messages. A citation, at least. Where it sends its copy messages. That's the guy from the paper. Solved that big case. No shit. Hey, what you at the bar? Yeah, you're the guy at the bar. All right, Birdman, give yourself up. Grosvenor McCaffrey. Now. Running on a hangover. You're not gonna McCaffrey? fly the coop. Sit down and we'll talk a bit. You're not gonna we'll get our fly the coop this time, Birdman. Where the fuck did he go? Oh, right. There. Slide ah! down. Faster! Wait, it's all Richard. Here. Running on a hangover, McCaffrey? Sit You're down and we'll that talk. Son of a bitch. I'll go get our wheels. Stop, McCaffrey, stop. Pinko, sure can run. Run, you pinko. You a runner, McCaffrey? Stay and fight the good fight. Don't make me want to put a boat in your ass. Where's my gun? Oh, you're pretty agile, aren't you? Why fight no more? You fight. You fight. Fight on the desk. Give it up, LAPD. Oh, you're unfit for service. Come here. Take him. Hey. Caffrey, you're under arrest on suspicion of murdering Evelyn Summers. Let's go, Pinko. We need to get downtown and wrap this thing up. It's got to be right. Yeah. Unless Terranen set him up. You don't think that asshole Jameson could have done it, do you? Nope. Not whoever did it. So what's that guy you fuck? How do you know that McCaffrey didn't do the dog yet? We have a list of over 200 suspects. His name was never on it. If you think the list is exhaustive... Whoa there! If you think the I list is exhaustive, it. Rusty, <laughs> who am I to argue? Listen, let's just work the case at hand, shall we? Then we can sit down and put all the puzzle pieces together in the latest day. I'll hold you to that. Where are you, Rusty? Easy. 
Wrecked and wrecking shit. Central Police Station, 7:23 p.m. Okay, let's wrap this case up. Line up. You sure you can make it stick with one of these suspects, gentlemen? It's either McCaffrey or Tiernan, sir. I think Jameson is an aberration. All right. I'll deal with that degraded lunatic myself. He's got some fearful retribution coming. Tiernan is a one, McCaffrey is not two. I want a confession from one of them. You got it, Skipper. Don't fail me, young Phelps. I won't, Skipper. I want to feel the rap of an old school Irish The Nazis first stripped off me at the grand jury. Case got thrown out. No. Now the DA wants my head. Well, well, Mr. Why did you Tiernan. run, Tiernan? I was the last one to see Evelyn that night. I knew you would think it was me. James Tiernan. Eyes blue, hair brown, age 24, sex male. Rawlings bowling alley employee and friend of victim. Relationship with Victor. Can you describe your relationship with Evelyn? I, I barely knew Evelyn. Lying. Keep lying to me and I'll have you charged and in front of a grand jury before your feet touch the ground. <laughs> How can you possibly prove Evelyn and I were more than friends? Because you were last seen, according to the McCaffrey. McCaffrey gave you up, Tiernan. He says he saw you go into your hotel with Evelyn. I met Evelyn at the public library. We would read for a while and then go for a drink. Last night we went back to my hotel room and had some more to drink. I Did you have any must have more passed out. I woke up like, and she was gone. Evelyn? What time was this? Around midnight, maybe later. And there's no one who can confirm this? No, there isn't. I knew you wouldn't believe me. Victim's book found. Aristotle's Metaphysics, the book that belonged to McCaffrey. McCaffrey saw her looking at her once and laughed in her face. And you're saying Evelyn stole it? She wanted something of his. Okay, you're not telling me all I want to hear, but I have no proof of that, so doubt. We either hang this on you or McCaffrey. You better give us something. Well, McCaffrey's been in trouble with the law before. I mean, he always makes out it was some kind of labor dispute. But, you know, I'm, I'm not so sure. Okay. Alibi for James Turner. You and Evelyn were drinking together last night. And she had no other place to stay. I don't know what happened last night. I, I don't remember. Lying again. Shit bird. You're lying, Tiernan. You've been fighting with her. You fought and- I'm not lying! She got up and left! That was it! Oh, sorry. Tiernan, you are lying. And how do I know? Because Robbins, the store owner, testifies the victim bought whiskey for a boy after an argument. Because you had an argument. Liquor purchase. She left, but she came back. She bought you a quart of whiskey to make it up to you. She told the Ryan liquor store whiskey. owner, you're in deep trouble, buddy. She said she loved me. She wanted to care for me. She didn't care for she herself. She never stopped talking about McCaffrey. McCaffrey was a writer. McCaffrey was a hero. McCaffrey cared for the little guy. Did you kill her, Tiernan? I might as well have. I kicked her out. She had nowhere to go. Access to murder weapon. Do you own a car, Tiernan? No, I don't. Hmm. But you escaped Have them. access to a lug wrench? No, we use a lot of them. To clear jams in the pin setting machines. Are you fucking with me, Tiernan? No. Coroner's report says that Evelyn was killed with a wrench. I think you did it and then planted the evidence at McCaffrey's apartment for us to find. We went to his apartment. McCaffrey was up on the roof. Evelyn stole the book. <laughs> McCaffrey went crazy when he found out. He said, he said he would put her out of her misery. He can be very cruel. I have two choices. Charge suspect or leave interrogation. Leave interrogation. Evelyn was missing a ring from her right hand. That's strange. 
She always wore it. A uh, big black circular disc with a white E in the middle. It was made from an old typewriter key, a present from the prop department at her old movie studio. We want to talk to McCaffrey. You need to think about what you've told us, Tiernan. And it doesn't Not get you off the hook, son. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to stop him with one round. Let's go to number two. Oh, interview number two is probably this one. Anybody making coffee soon? Can I take this down? This one. You ready to answer some questions? You think I have all the answers? People who run from the police usually have something to hide. Touche, detective. Let's see where this takes us. Okay, smart guy. Alibi for McCaffrey. Evelyn died sometime around midnight. Remind me, where were you? I was at home, writing. I'm working on a manuscript. You think you're so slick, you sack of shit. Lie. You're lying, McCaffrey. You were out at the rail yard. And what do you have that proves I was there? Well, it seems you had the other half of the torn letter from Evelyn's mother. Haven't you got parking tickets to hand out? And ass whoopers if you don't shut the fuck up. And let me do my police work. You're going to have to do better than that, detective. Oops. Got that one wrong. We found the lug wrench that Evelyn was battered with in your apartment, and the note from her mother, and your blood-stained clothing. We have you cold, McCaffrey. You think if I could be bothered to murder Evelyn Summers, I would be stupid enough to leave the evidence in my apartment? Yeah, so you're lying again. I don't believe you, Grosvenor. The evidence says that you killed her. You can prove that I wanted to kill Evelyn? Tiernan testifies to threats of violence against victims made by Grosvenor and McCaffrey. Tiernan is prepared to testify that you threatened Evelyn's life in his presence. Self-preservation. That's understandable. Okay, I'll level with you. Tiernan killed Evelyn. He came to me for help. I listened to him, and he explained why he did it. Tiernan went to you for help. You expect me to buy that? That's how it went down. I told him he made a terrible mistake, but he would be throwing his life away if he went to the cops. I took his things and told him I would dispose of them. But you didn't. Speak to Tiernan. He'll give it up. We're not done yet. Be indecisive. Now? I'm not so sure. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to put him down in one round. Guy gave his wife a tap. I say all fair in love and war. I want to make comments. You know you've made it. Okay, 
I didn't read the whole letter. You spoken to McCaffrey? I can go, it's all been cleared up. Not quite. We have one more question we need to ask, James. Then I think we will be done. Sure. Go ahead. So Evelyn passed out, and you walked out. What happened next? I woke up in the morning. Very hungover. I thought Evelyn would have come back. Lie. I know you're lying, James. You went out looking for her. Tell me what really happened. I don't know what you're talking about. How, how can you say I wasn't in that hotel room? Because of McCaffrey's accusation against you. McCaffrey testifies to Taryn and confessing and asking for help disposing of evidence. You wound up at McCaffrey's. You were still incredibly drunk. You passed out on his floor. It's time to tell me what really happened. McCaffrey woke me up the next morning. And he showed me the lug wrench and the letter and the box. And he said I came in with him last night. He said that I killed Evelyn. And that it was all over the radio. And that he would protect me. And I don't know, detective, for the life of me, I can't remember a goddamn thing. And I was angry with her. Really angry. I could have done it. Was it me? Leave interrogation. Wait here. I need a drink. I got the jitters again. Operator, message for KGPL. Putting you through now. Phelps, one, two, four, seven. How can I help, detective? I need the jacket on a Grosvenor McCaffrey. Just a moment, detective. McCaffrey was formerly under surveillance by the Red Squad. Conviction for petty theft. Dishonorable discharge from the Army during training at Syracuse. Assault on a local woman. Says he almost beat the woman to death. Good gosh. Thanks. All right. Let's go see McCaffrey. Wrap this up. He's definitely our guy. Mouthpiece got stripped off me at the grand jury. Case got thrown out. Now the DA wants my head. And you too. You're the reason brothers and sisters should marry. One last question. You were in the war? Yes, I was. Seeing the things that I saw. <laughs> it changes a man. I came back here determined to change things. All I wanted was a pen and an opportunity to speak out. You told us before that you had only minor run-ins with the police. You didn't mention petty theft. I've never been in trouble for violence. That's the salient point here, isn't it? Well, you're lying. Again. You're lying, McCaffrey. You have a history of violence towards women. How do you turn a couple parking tickets in a petty theft misdemeanor into an assault charge? Well, it turns out... McCaffrey's criminal record. McCaffrey previously charged with petty theft, assault, and discharge from military. We know all about you and your dishonorable discharge, beating some poor woman near to death in Syracuse. 
He's never been in combat, McCaffrey. Your oh, whole Jared, life is a fraud. She's she was a, a goddamn man. peasant whore! She tried to steal from my wallet! I could've fought for this country! I could've... You beat her because she stole from you. Because she tried to outsmart you. The ignorant audacity of the bitch! What is a man supposed to do? Sit there and take it? How is a man supposed to call himself a man? And Evelyn Summers, a poor, drunken nobody, stole your book. And she got what was coming to her! Charge suspect. Grosvenor McCaffrey, I'm charging you with the murder of Evelyn Summers. She was a sad lady who never hurt anyone except herself. I hope God finds a way to forgive you. <laughs> Congratulations, boys, you bagged the fine catch. Another red to boot, Grant. Now, I want you to put this business about a repeat offender out of your mind. This McCaffrey creature shows no remorse, and neither will the grand jury. You would have to walk a long mile to find a better candidate for an unmarked plot in the prison graveyard. <laughs> Let's see how I did. Studio Secretary Murder Case Report. 15 out of 17 clues found. 14 out of 15 questions correct. 2013 for vehicular damage and 210 for city damage. Distinguished. Four stars. Grosvenor McCaffrey can write a tell-all memoir from his cell on death row. Aha! I think it's about time I'm gonna take myself a break, but I'll be back with more Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir Gameplay Walkthrough Episode Number 7. case in the desk of homicide. We are now continuing with 
this edition of Let's Play Classic Ellie Noir Gaming Walkthrough Episode 7 The Quarter Moon Murders. Quarter Moon Murders. Well done, lads. You did well with the Summers case. But we have a problem. The examiner received a new letter today. Do you mind if I take a look, Ray? Go right ahead. They've both been rinsed in gasoline like the previous letters, so I can't lift a print. To suffer woes which hope thinks infinite forgive wrongs darker than death or night. To defy power which seems omnipotent, to love and bear it to hope till hope creates from its own wreck the things it contemplates, neither to change, nor falter, nor repent. This, like thy glory, titan is to be, good, great, and joyous, beautiful, and free. This is alone, life, joy, empire, and victory. Percy Shelley. No one else but the killer knew about this message. Cut, BD. Find me where I hid myself. Another snippet from the Shelley poem. Looking in wonder up to heaven, while yet the music Peeled along, I hid myself within a fountain in the public square, where I lay the reflex of the moon, seen in a wave under green leaves. If the note is from the Dahlia maniac, he definitely also killed Teresa Terrell. Mal and I agree. But where does that leave us? If this is the Dahlia killer, and he is responsible for the Terrells and murder, not to mention the Mullers. Hang on a moment, Skipper. Let me finish, Rusty. We have five birds in hand and none in the bush. The department will not survive a scandal if we have to let them all go without catching a fiend first. Your careers would be over for a start, gentlemen. Looking in wonder... Ah, oh, fuck it! Well, yet I knew this rhyme was too good to be on. true. I hid myself within a fountain in the public square. You like that stuff? What is it supposed to it's mean? Supposed to Forget what it's supposed to. What does he want? It Where to are you be? going with this, Cole? He's obviously taunting us. He believes he's far more intelligent than we are. Okay. It's some kind of story, right? A guy that God hates chains him up. It's an allegory, Rusty. A what? story with two meanings. A symbolic meaning. But that's what he wants us to think. Could he be using it literally? Within a fountain in a public square? Could it be that easy? Could somebody tell me what the fuck is going on? The fountain in Pershing Square. Come on. We have a clue. Captain? Thanks, Ray. Be careful, Phelps. This is his game you're playing now. Right, here we go. A quarter moon murders. You so wait. we do have a Five lead. Five years from now, all our jobs will be done by robots. Hmm, or AI. <laughs> we're already there. The main reason Santa's so jolly is because he knows where all the bad girls live. Yeah, I'm thinking of moving up to a 45. I want to put him down to one round. I don't want no part of it. Captain finds out, we're dead. Good mind to take your time, mister. Pershing Square. All those cases, Rusty. What have I been telling you all along? You gotta get this guy. I know. Enough women have died. Yeah, and it's our asses on the line too, Phelps. You heard what the captain said. The department is not gonna take responsibility for all those bad convictions. Success is a double-edged sword. 
Let's just get this sick pervert and have it done with. You have the car you want. <laughs> Pershing Square, 2.50 p.m. Rather you than me, Phelps. Who we got here? You know the local hobo used that as a train. Elizabeth Short. Elizabeth Short. Betty Short. Black Dahlia. Social Security card. There is a cave, all overgrown with trailing odorous plants which curtain out the day. Where next? with leaves and flowers, and paved with vein, emerald, and a fountain leaps in midst with an awakening sound. From its curved roof, the mountains froze tears, like snow or silver or long diamond spires, hang downward, raining forth a doubtful light. Elizabeth Short's social security card. Jesus Christ. That's not all. There's another stanza from Shelley. Can you work it out? Hmm. You got a city map? See if you can work out where he's taking us. I don't like this freak leading us around by the nose. Hall of Records. The distinctive twin Gothic towers of the Hall of Records rise above a, a domed skylight, some 50 feet across. The glasswork depicts a mountain cave overgrown with plants and wildflowers, and a waterfall chandelier hangs downward over the lobby. That's it. Hall of Records. Goddamn Harry thinks he can get fresh whenever he pleases. What's gonna have? I'm gonna have him. Can you drive to this one? Him. It's really him. Fuck who killed the Dahlia. Can you believe this? He's leading us. It's his game, Rusty. He may want someone to catch him, but he's extremely dangerous. I doubt if he will give up easily. Suits me down to the fucking ground. We clip this fuck and we get citations. <laughs> what a day to be a cop. That pencil pushing Parker won't be able to shove me aside after this. What do you think, folks? This case is getting weird. So if these men that we've previously charged are innocent, then who's doing all the killing? Hall of Records, 2.58 p.m. Can I help you, sir? Detectives, LAPD. This is very important, sir. 
How do we get to the top of the chandelier? You what? Have a little faith, pal. We're in a real hurry. Head up to the top floor. There's an access panel and a ladder in the maintenance room. Buddy, you drop something? from the wife I like you isn't he the cop who won People a medal say I have no taste, all the cases? but I like you did you read about the woman who stabbed her husband and then pushed him in front of the car that's the cop who caught her I swear this well, town is going straight everybody. to hell I guess we'll follow Rusty Son, you're a couple of slates short of a full room. I'm going up to the lakes to watch the races on Saturday. I could save all year and not be able to afford that. Hey buddy, you drop something? Peanuts are walking down no, the street. There, One was a sulfur. Go. Up the ladder we go. I'm going out there, Rusty. <laughs> Better you than me. Be careful. Could be a trap. Deirdre Muller's missing watch. Hmm. The temple's high of man's ear and eye, roofed over sculptures and posy. Where have I seen that? From the murmurs of the unsealed springs, where science bedews. Very <laughs> public life. Jesus Christ, hold it off that goddamn thing! Find a rope, Rusty! There isn't time! See if you can swing that thing from side to side. Get it over the edge, then jump for it. Swing! Come on, come on! It's gonna go 
go any second. Look at that goddamn thing and jump for it. That was too close. Yeah, well, the higher you climb, the further you fall. Let's get out of here. Another Dahlia clue? No. A yellow gold wristwatch. The Molder Dame. Yes. And a scrap of the poem. Another location. If I can work it out. Look at the map. Is this time we're taking a fast car? Fast we can find. Bertram Grosvenor Goodhue drew on ancient Egypt to create his high temple-like central library. The building is roofed over with a mosaic pyramid and a sculptured torch-bearing hand stands at the apex, representing the scientific light of learning. mementos from all his victims. This guy needs to be taken out of circulation. He Amen. takes pleasure at stringing us along, demonstrating how much smarter he is. You can enjoy it while it lasts. Got you now, Jesus. Come.
L.A. Public Library, 3.30 p.m. I'm pulling rank here, Cole. I'm not hauling myself up there. Go get it. Yeah, you got it, brother. Maybe you have a heart attack. Slow me down anyway, old timer. Ah, uh -huh, fuck you, folks. Hardcore mix with being an acrobat. Shit, just to solve a fucking case. It's crazy. But it is a Oh shit, not another one. Damn. I'll definitely fall from this shit. Sometimes a step backwards is a step in the right direction. Yeah, and a step into the pavement. That'll be a pain in the ass. Here we go. Our Lady of Guadalupe, ripped from Antonia's necklace. The Captain Medallion. Round which death laughed, sepulchred emblems of dead destruction, ruin within ruin. The wrecks beside us. So this is a treasure hunt. Of many a city vast whose population which the earth grew over was mortal, but not human. See, they lie. Their monstrous works and uncouth skeletons, their statues, homes, and fanes, prodigious shapes huddled in gray annihilation split, jammed in the hard, black, deep. Hmm. What is it this time? The religious medal from the Maldonado case. The Dahlia, Moeller, Maldonado. When this gets out... We still have to find the guy, Rusty. Another poem. Well, you must have some idea, right? Come on, Phelps. We're on a roll here. Don't let me down. Hmm. Something about black.
That price is outrageous. We don't need this. Take another cut. there that's black let me see Westlake tar pits father Juan Crespi wrote of Los Volcanos de Brea in 1769 by 1901, archaeological, archaeological specimens were emerging, including the skeleton of a human female in 1914. Trauma to her skull suggests that she may have been L.A.'s first recorded homicide. Hmm. So it's the La Brea Tar Pits. We're going to catch hell for this. Banging up innocent men. The newspapers will crucify the guy. They won't have time to wonder about our mistakes. We'll be okay, Rusty. As long as we catch the guy. I hope you're right, Cole. We'll be famous if we made this case.
driver. That would be an achievement. Reckless driver. Reckless driver. Uh huh, Alex. Here we are, let's take time. These are my best shoes, Phelps. I'll leave you to it. Yeah, what about this suit? Very funny. In the tar pits. Bubbly. Whoa! Oh, shit. Get a move on, Paul. Those boards are sinking. You want to end up like the other fossils? Oh, hell no. Oh, shit! The gangway snakes around, Phelps. Can you see it through the tar? Steady. How you doing out there? Shut up! I'd be doing better if you were the one trying to get across this thing. Can you shut the hell up? Concentrate. Whoa! Gotta move on, Cole. Those boards are sinking. You want to end up like the other fossils? Mm -hmm. The gangway snakes around, Phelps. So. Can you see it through the car? Whoa! How you doing out there? I'd be doing better if you were the one trying to get across this yeah, thing. Yeah, he wouldn't last either. Especially with his fat ass. You wouldn't last with your fat ass. Easy. Easy does it. You don't want to fall in now, Phelps. That's at the forefront of my thinking. Yeah. Steady. I'm probably gonna kick back and have a beer. You probably lost your partner and not in not in a means of homicide. Oh here we go. He just drawn in the tar pits. The white shoe, that must be from the One of Teresa Terrellson's shoes. Terrellson is. Oh, another fucking letter. What does it read? What does it mean? A sphere which is as many thousand spheres. Okay, where to now? Something like maybe a museum or something. What is it? An open-toed white shoe and another stanza from the column. Oh, I really thought that hobo bum did the Terrellson bra. Confessions from the insane aren't the most credible evidence, Rusty. Is this thing over? It's all part of his power over us, making us run round all over the city for the crumbs he's leaving. So if we keep this up, we can find the guy? 
Hopefully. And we're still taking that same car. So I'm thinking it's a museum. It's gotta be. Los Angeles County Art Museum. This site hosted racing and gambling until 1909 when concerned citizens had it recreated as a cultural center. The museum kept fine art while the Rose Garden hid wonders such as a spear within a spear, yep, celestial model, or armillary spear. Okay, let's run with that. Same car. This time, Rusty drive. I want to wrap this case up. You drive. I need to go over the case notes. I'm in a hurry, but I'm too lazy to drive, so I learned to have my partner do it. Well, this guy looks out for women in bars who've had too much to drink, who are emotionally disturbed, need a shoulder to cry on, he flies them with booze, probably offers them a lift home. Then beats their brains out and strangles them. Could be any schmo hanging out in the bar. No, not anyone. He displays the bodies, leaves us messages. For all the violence, it's very controlled behavior. While taking cheap shots at the LAPD. Guy's a sick bastard. But you know what's not sick? Liking and subscribing to the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel for more Let's Play classics such as LA Noir and many other games including Grand Theft Auto 5 and Sleeping Dogs. And if you do feel a little generous, I do have a Patreon. The link is in the description if you'd like to contribute. I would appreciate it. Let's check it out. And on it goes. When do you think we'll reach the end of this thing? Soon. This case is getting on my damn nerves. Center of the proverbial labyrinth? How long is a piece of string? How many unsolved murders have we got in this city? You wait. This way to Five the years from now, all our jobs will be done by robots. Look, that's the latest thing. Been in here, Gallo? Yeah. No. I have no intention of going in. I heard that thing's tricky. I'm gonna wait here and have a quiet smoke. Think about hidden meetings. Yeah. 
Oh, here we are. Get a little closer. Once belonging to Celine Axford Henry. The Henry case. Thrones, altars, judgment seats, and prisons. No, it couldn't be. And beside which, by wretched men were born scepters, tiaras, swords, and chains and tones of recent wrong, closed on by ignorance, were like those monstrous barbaric shapes, the ghost of no more remembered thing, which for the unborn like obelisk look for. See? That was easy. I found Celine Henry's ring. How far does this thing go? How did we not catch this nut job? Okay. Thrones. All that stuff. Must mean the movie set. And you'll be pleased to know that this will be the last of the homicide cases. So the remaining L.A. Noir episodes are going to go live. Which means I don't necessarily have to do any post-production. And that's a good thing for me. Let's see here. Intolerance set. <laughs> Intolerance. The Great Wall of Babylon was set. The Great Wall of Babylon set was built for D. W. Griffith's silent epic *Intolerance*. More than three thousand extras paraded past the altar and throne, beneath eight giant plaster elephants. The film, the most expensive ever produced at the time, flopped at the box office. No shit. The same D. W. Griffith came out with a birth of a nation. That's the cop from the newspapers. That's the cop from the newspapers. Why are you whispering? You think I won't hear? Hmm? Let me guess. I don't know you sucker. Surprise, motherfucker! Yeah, let's wrap this shit up. You can drive. Do it again. Surprise, motherfucker! He's leading us this trail of evidence. Why? Vanity. He wants to see if there's anyone out there smart enough to catch him. He leaves us evidence, but every location is a trap. He's testing us. Physically and mentally, to see whether we are worthy of him. The Titan guy. You have the stouts with God. Very good. You thinking about reading some Shelley? Hmm. All that egghead stuff? <laughs> no, I'm sticking to the funny papers and the form guy. You sleep better at night. Hmm. Movie set, 7.30 p.m. There's the throne up there. This is where we arrested that pervert. Yeah, here we go again. Climb to the throne. Is death trap. We 
Been doing this all day. Oh, I'll get you off of there. You gotta make it to the next platform. I'm gonna run into some more shit again. Not again, please. <laughs> <laughs> Guess there is no intuition. Oh wait, jaw clean. Okay, here we go. What? 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 Over here. Got a ladder or something to climb down? Shit. Okay. Oh, here we go. Fighter ring. Mm. Evelyn Summers. Remit the place he calls home. End of the line. Remit the anguish of that lighted stare. Close those wan lips. Let that thorn wounded brow stream not with blood. It mingles with thy tears. Fix, fix those tortured orbs in peace and death. So thy sick throes shake not that crucifix. So those pale fingers play not with thy gore. Oh, horrible, thy name I will not speak. It hath become a curse, I see, I see. The wise, the mild, the lofty, and the just. Whom they slave, whom thy slaves hate for being like to thee. Some hunted by foul lies from their heart's home, and early chosen late lamented home. Hmm. Weird. Oh shit, not again. Get the fuck out of here! No, 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 no! Come on! Ah, no! All right. I thought the whole thing was gonna come crashing down on me. I thought so, too. He murdered Evelyn Summers, Rusty. The last trophy was her ring. Did you find another piece of the poem? Yes. The last piece. You sure, Cole? Let's find out. I think it's that church. Because it's all having to do with the end. Christ's crown of thorns. Built in 1858, Christ's crown of thorns was a gothic revival masterpiece. What fell into despair after a tree collapsed the roof in the storm of September 1939. A work of lead light rises above the abandoned altar, depicting the crucifixion and a weeping virgin. We have better cover this bullshit. 
might see this as a cry for help. For God's sake, Phelps. I'm not trying to justify this. Hear me out, Rusty. This guy has been successfully slaughtering women in this town for half a year, maybe longer. He researches who he is, and then plants evidence so that we always have someone to go after. If he hadn't sent the letters and the poem, he could have gone on forever. We would have been none the wiser. We would have four executed men on our conscience and have been happy about it. Why else is he doing this? You're the new face of the department, Phelps. The modern cop tries to understand why the perp does what he does. Me? I just drop the hammer down my whole lives. Front of road from your heel, you don't worry about what it's feeling, you just grind it into the pavement. We'll get a fast car and get this bastard. Oh, someone getting dropped off. Wow. Oh, yeah. As a matter of fact, I do own the road. And I'm gonna take that vehicle. That looks just nice. Just right. We're taking the vehicle. Enjoy the ride. Ooh. We're still in ride. We're police. Shut up. Like that pig in that commercial. Matter of fact, I do own the room. And it's raining too. Here we are. Abandoned church at Presbyterian. Presbyterian. 7.45 p.m. This is it. The whole stretch. About time, too. Reminds me of my days as an altar boy. There's a light coming from the house. Nothing hasty, gentlemen. Keep your hands where I can see them, or I'll be forced to redecorate the stucco with your entrails. We're from the LAPD, sir. Hey, I'm going to tell that? you only once to lower your that weapon. Guy's the bartender. The LAPD, you say? Is it really possible you could have found me after all this time? How interesting. Put down the gun, shitbird. Last warning. This boorish ignoramus could never have found me. It was you, wasn't it? Do you remember me, detective? The temp bartender. Yes, you found me. You know what I'm capable of, and yet you walk in here like lambs dressed for the slaughter. We'll see about that. Um, you gotta get old poetic shitbird. Let's see how you handle a gun. You know you got a fucking shotgun. Let's do it. Coming out, you bastard. Where did he go? Anyway. Down the tunnel? We can't let the son of a bitch get away. Got that right. The house, Rusty. There must be another entrance into the house. Let's go. Into the catacombs.
Maybe it's that time. Oh, wait. No wonder why they call this guy the werewolf. Where are you, you slippery bastard? Up. Yeah, shit heel. This must have been the place, Rusty. Probably what happened to Elizabeth Short. We're going down there? At least I am. I'll go. Call for backup. <laughs> You're an interesting man, Detective. Why the police? Wow. Reinforcements are on the way. Cease and desist. I'll pop a cap in your ass. I'll bust a cap in your ass. Ah! Damn! I walked into that shit. What a dumbass. <laughs> and no skipping this time. Going down there? I am. You can stay. I'll go. Call for backup and keep an eye out above ground and see where this thing comes out. Don't let me down, Rusty. Oh. You're an interesting man, Detective. Why the police force? You're obviously overqualified. Surrender now, or I will use deadly force. In other words, I'll bust a cap in your ass. Do I get a sense you're looking for personal redemption? Do you think we have something in common? This thing has come to an end. You know that. Holy shit. Yeah, pop your head one more time. Oh, I'll blow it off. Blow it off. Shotgun or no. He's a good shot, though. Are you acquainted with Slaughter? Does it attract you? Have you felt the fear? Oh. Damn, man, stop that shit. Are you comfortable out of the light, officer? Are you comfortable? You stop with the bullshit, man. You're exactly what I expected. We were looking for a low achiever. Yeah, you think you're the master of mind fuckery? Is that dead end? Where did this piece of shit go? Where did he go? Like a 
double back. Reinforcements are on the way. Cease and desist. Come on out! You slippery fuck. Surrender now or I will use deadly force! I'll blow your punk ass away. Shoot me again. Hey, that was an eight dollar hat. Come back here, Garrett Mason. Come on out, shit bird. You're exactly what I expected. We were looking for you. Blind fire. Bitch! Take that! Got you, bitch! Where's the press, Gap? I think Phelps and I should get a medal for this. So this has got to be the case of the year, right? The case of the century, when you think about it. Are you finished? Yes, Skipper. Good. Because there won't be any press briefings or commendations. Say what? What are you talking about? We got the werewolf, the guy who killed the Dahlia, killed all the other broads. You got no one. Mason was a ghost. Can you at least tell us why, Captain? Cover up. Mason is the half brother of one of the most highly elected officials in this country. How Shit. high? Politics. Beyond the moon for mere mortals like us, Rusty. There'll be no more mention of him. The city owes you both, but there'll be no mileage in never bringing this up again. What's going to happen to the suspects in the cases, Captain? I won't be a part of that. A bit of missing evidence at the grand jury. A procedural error here, a mistake there. They'll all be quietly let go. The DA knows how we got to play it. That's it? I'm afraid it is. And I have some news for you, Phelps. No more rooting around in the entrails of cadavers and corpses for you. The head of vice has asked the chief for you. I'm reluctant to see you go to the glory boys of advice, but my hands are tied. Go home to that lovely wife. Celebrate your What the fuck was that? Here we go. Case closed. The case of the Black Dahlia remains open. The truth lost to all but a handful of men. Promoted. Vice Desk, Hollywood Police Station, Division 6. So, just like this. And with that, that concludes this portion of Let's Play Classic L.A. Noir Gaming Walkthrough number 7 on the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. And with that said, I'm actually going to be going live the next episode, episode 8, 
going to the desk of advice, administrative advice, and LA Noir. Until then, I'm Kill the Vid for the 9 to 5 Outlaw Does Gaming YouTube and Twitch channel. Stay safe.